as far as hiring goes, I mean, if once you find that one or two really like smart, motivated, trustworthy VA, it will make your whole business so much easier. Welcome, my name is John Jonas and I'm here with Kevin King. We're gonna do a quick case study about how Kevin has hired his virtual assistants. He, he has a really good story, so uh, welcome, Kevin. Hey, how's it going, guys? So good to have you here, man. Thanks. So you sent me an email about your VAs and, and how, kind of how you got started. Can you, like, can you talk through that process of, of first, first wanting to get a VA? Like what was, the, what was the driving factor behind it? I kind of dropped out of college and started my first dropshipping business. And so at the time of uh, starting the business and trying to scale it up, I was kind of tight on funds. So I was doing just about everything myself. Um, then as business picked up and there was more customers and more money, um, I decided it was time to hire somebody. I had friends that do um, dropshipping too and have e-commerce businesses. So um, they kind of recommended outsourcing to the Philippines. It was just you know, a little more inexpensive and they spoke good English and they were loyal. Generally speaking, they were, you know, loyal. So I decided to outsource to the Philippines and um, I had a lot of success with it, actually. So someone recommended to you onlinejobs.ph? Yeah. One of my friends, uh, Trevor Fenner, you might actually know him. Oh, yeah, I know Trevor. Yeah. He's from California. I'm from California, too. We, we skateboarded together and he's kind of helped me a lot on my uh, e-commerce journey. So, yeah, he recommended onlinejobs.ph and... Um, yeah, that's how I kind of heard about it. So first of all, you're running Shopify, right? Yeah. You're running a Shopify store. Like you went to find someone to work on your Shopify, right? My goal and what I wanted was I wanted someone to answer the phones, to help with, uh, you know, customer service, help with product, fulfill orders. And um, yeah, basically just like the, the daily tasks that can be outsourced. I wanted to outsource that so I could focus on like Google Ads, SEO, email marketing, that kind of thing, um, which is what I like to do and what I think is the most valuable uh, to the business. So when you went into online jobs, you started looking like you, I don't know, did you post a job? Did you look at profiles? You were looking for a Shopify VA. You know, I just want someone with Shopify experience so I don't have to teach them and they'll kind of just come in and know, you know, know what they're doing from the get go. But I kind of, as I was like thinking of that strategy, I was, I just kind of realized like, you know, Shopify is so easy to learn. I learned it on my own. I didn't even take any courses. I learned how to you know, like design a site within like a week or whatever. So I kind of like shifted the strategy and like what I wanted from a VA from, you know, someone who knew Shopify already to just, I, you know, I shifted from that to just trying to find someone that was seemed intelligent, you know, from, from an interview, seemed motivated and seemed willing to learn. Um, you know, this whole like e-commerce Shopify type of thing. And that's what I went for. I, I kind of just picked the best applicant, the one who seems like the most motivated, the most intelligent and, in, you know, from me and from what I saw as I, as I interviewed them, that seemed to have worked the best. And that's kind of the strategy that I've, that I've stuck to. Sweet. I love it. I think so many people would benefit from, from learning that like you don't, you don't have to have a Shopify expert or a WooCommerce expert or, or, or whatever it is, right? Like uh, you want someone who's intelligent because well, whatever that piece of software is, is not that hard to learn. And then yeah. second, like software changes over time, you know? So if they know it now, you know, they, they're going to have to learn something new soon. Definitely. Yeah, Shopify is probably one of the easiest. Like I've used WordPress and I've used Wix. I, I, I think, well, for e-commerce, I think Shopify is the best, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I agree with you. And, and, it's, and it's pretty easy to learn. And there's some stuff to learn, but, but you can do it, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so what did you have him doing for you? You hired this guy. He, he doesn't know a lot about or anything about Shopify, but he's pretty talented. Well, he doesn't work with me anymore. He was doing, you know, answering the phones, helping with customers, helping with, you know, answering questions about products, fulfilling orders, helping me. They even helped me, you know, doing, uh, keeping, keeping my books a little bit. I have an accountant now, but back then I was kind of doing that myself too. And they would help me out with that, spreadsheets, that, that kind of thing. Cool. So all kinds of stuff that was like, Things that you were doing, things you don't like to do, things that you're not good at, but yeah. you knew how to do all these things. Yeah, I knew how to do them all. And that's kind of, I was, you know, I was able to train them on, on all those things because I knew how to do them. And I knew, you know, if they were to do it wrong, then I knew when they had made a mistake. So I was able to correct it. Basically just things that I didn't really want to spend my time to, I kind of had them do. Sweet. So why doesn't he work for you anymore? 
this particular individual, um, he actually found a higher paying job. He has a family. I don't know how many kids he has, but he definitely has a few kids and he needed a higher paying job. Before he quit, he actually found a friend to take his position. And so when he came to me to tell me that he would be leaving, at the same time introduced me to the new guy who, who would be taking his place, you know, if I was interested. And of course I was because that eliminates me having to sift through applications and, and go through that whole process again. So I, I took the new guy in and actually the, the, the guy who was quitting helped train the new guy. So I didn't really take a lot of my time up to, to train the new one. So I have 26 people that work for me in the Philippines today. And the, the situation you described to me is, has happened almost exactly word for word to me. Where, So you told me before that the first guy that you hired, the one who quit, he, he had like some significant managerial experience. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was used to making a lot more money than you were paying him. Like you were paying $3 an hour and he had found a job making $12 an hour. Yeah. And, which, you know, the, neither of those numbers are, are super uncommon in either situation, like on a low end person or a high end person, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he, he probably found his work in a different line of work, the, the management stuff. And I've had that same thing happen to me where I had someone, I they were making $500 a month full time. They found a job making $2,500 a month full time. Mm -hmm. And they found their own replacement for me. Almost the exact yeah. same thing. So yeah. it's not super common for that to happen, but but it can exist. And, and it shows you a bit of the loyalty of the Filipinos. Like, I'm not just going to leave you high and dry. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out. You know, I'm going to find you a replacement. So. Yeah. So from there, the new, the new guy, talk about what you got, because today you have a bunch of people working for you. My, my, I have two main VAs that work full-time. Well, I have three full-time and about five part-time, so somewhere around eight, seven or eight. So when one quits or, or disappears, you know, the, the other two, they have friends, you know, that they've met through the years working in the, the call centers that are always looking for jobs. So they'll kind of just hire people. They won't even really, like, they won't even really tell me they'll just they'll hire people when they need it and it's kind of that's kind of what i tell them to do like if you need you know if we need people like feel free to just hire your friends you know find people we have people on standby too so just in case you know we get a lot more business um we can kind of um, keep up with it how do you handle paying those other those extra other people well we use you know we use paypal but actually i'm just starting to uh i let i gave access to my PayPal to one of my VAs because I, I really trust him. So he's actually starting to pay the part-time VAs through the PayPal account that he has access to. So he actually kind of just takes care of them. So we, and we pay them every two weeks. So you have three VAs that you work with. They, they hire other friends of theirs. Like they contract with them that they, they figure out their, their rates. Yeah, people yeah. Then report their hours and you pay them and now your VAs are paying them. Yeah, basically. I mean, they're I, my main VA, they know like what a new VA would get paid. They know that when they ask their friends if they want a job, they kind of they already know what what to what to tell them and, and what they should expect. It's pretty cool, actually, because I don't have to spend a lot of my time to hiring them hiring people. But you did in the beginning, like your very first your first hire, you spent a good amount of time recruiting, making sure he was right. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, if you if you if you post a job on on onlinejobs.ph, just and it's something more general or, or lower uh, barrier of entry, I guess you could say, like a Shopify VA or something like gener uh, general like that, you're gonna get a lot of applicants. So I got I don't remember, but probably at least sixty to seventy within the first few days. So I, yeah. I did spend a lot of time sifting through um, applications, but it was worth it. Picking the right one and, and taking that time definitely paid off and it's still paying off today. So, Any, any last things you want to say to people? Like, is there, is there anything that you do particularly well? I mean, you've done, you, there's some cool stuff that you're doing that, that I, as I look at what you're doing, I'm like, hey, I think we should implement this. Like, I, I'm going to get some of my team hiring other people. We, we have a few of them doing that, but not, not like you are. And I love it. Any, any other things that you do well or advice you want to give people? As far as hiring goes, I mean, if, once you find that one or two really like smart, motivated, trustworthy VA, 
um, it will make your whole life, your whole business so much easier. And I think I was in the article I wrote, I, for me, scaling the, the e-commerce stores that I have, I have three high ticket uh, dropshipping e-commerce stores now. Scale, being able to scale them up um, depends so much on how I don't have to spend time training each individual one because I can focus on, on marketing and, and other things like that. Taking the time to get that one good VA is pretty huge in my opinion. Kevin, this has been so great. Thank you so much for, for being here and thanks for, for telling your knowledge, man. It's been great. Of course. Thanks for having me. Uh-huh. Bye. 